ZMA is a popular supplement that combines zinc, magnesium, and vitamin B6, all of which are essential for your health. It is often used by athletes to support muscle recovery, improve sleep quality, and boost overall performance. But some people call it a scam. So let's talk about what exactly ZMA does, its ingredients, and how to take it correctly. So what is ZMA? ZMA was developed in the late 1990s by Victor Conte, who was the founder of Bell Collabs, which were later involved in a PED scandal. But that doesn't mean his supplements can't be good. Like I said before, ZMA combines three key ingredients, zinc, magnesium, and vitamin B6. He chose these nutrients because of their synergistic effect on muscle recovery, immune function, and sleep quality. Basically, what he found was that athletes, especially those training with very high intensity, often had deficiencies in zinc and magnesium. So he wanted to create a product to address this. And he also added B6 as a cofactor, and he marketed it especially to athletes. Let's go through each nutrient in more detail so you understand how it works. Zinc is an essential mineral that plays a critical role in immune function, protein synthesis, and cell division. It is also involved in wound healing and the breakdown of carbohydrates and, of course, the synthesis of testosterone. A zinc deficiency can lead to a weakened immunity, slower healing, and reduced athletic performance. When it comes to muscle recovery, zinc is crucial for protein synthesis, which is the process your body uses to repair and build new muscle fibers. This makes it especially important for athletes and anyone who works out regularly. Like I said before, zinc also plays a key role in maintaining healthy testosterone levels. That's because it is a critical enzyme cofactor for several steps in the conversion of cholesterol to testosterone. ZMA usually contains zinc in the form of zinc monomethionine or zinc monomethionine aspartate. Methionine is an essential amino acid rich in sulfur. And zinc monomethionine isn't as commonly used nowadays than it was in the 90s. Most supplements now opt for zinc forms like zinc citrate or zinc gluconate. But zinc monomethionine is still effective and there's nothing wrong with it. You just don't see it as often anymore. Magnesium's role in the body is very widespread. It is involved in over 300 biochemical processes, making it probably the most important mineral for overall health. It's essential for energy production, muscle relaxation, and nerve function. One of magnesium's main roles is supporting the nervous system and promoting relaxation. That's why it's often recommended to improve sleep quality and reduce overall stress. Magnesium deficiency can lead to issues like muscle cramps, fatigue, and anxiety. For athletes, magnesium is especially important because it helps the muscle to relax after they are contracted. Basically, Calcium contracts the muscle and magnesium relaxes it afterwards because it pushes calcium out of the muscle cell. The form of magnesium used in ZMA is usually magnesium aspartate, which is easier on the stomach and less likely to cause diarrhea compared to magnesium oxide, for example. But like zinc monomethionine, it's not as common today. If ZMA were reformulated today, they would probably use something like magnesium glycinate instead which is known for its stress-reducing effects. And lastly, what about vitamin B6? Vitamin B6, or paradoxin, is essential for brain health and neurotransmitter synthesis. It helps make serotonin and dopamine, and it is needed to produce stomach acid. It is one of the most important B vitamins and has a lot of roles in your body. For example, it is also necessary for hemoglobin production, which carries oxygen through your bloodstream. In ZMA, vitamin B helps the body absorb zinc and magnesium more effectively, so it acts as a cofactor. Now, how do you take ZMA correctly? It is usually taken as a single dose around 30 to 60 minutes before bedtime. This timing works well because magnesium helps promote relaxation and sleep, while zinc is also somewhat calming. Taking it on an empty stomach helps improve its absorption because certain other minerals like calcium can interfere with zinc uptake. But this usually only happens in very high doses, so you can also see great results when taking it together with a meal if you tolerate that better. In terms of dosage, ZMA was formulated to include 30 milligrams of zinc, 450 milligrams of magnesium, and 10.5 milligrams of vitamin B6. I wouldn't take more than one dose, 
because 30 milligrams of zinc is already quite a bit. Same with 450 milligrams of magnesium. I also want to talk about the research on ZMA. Early studies on it definitely showed benefits. For example, a small study from the 1990s reported that college football players who took ZMA saw significant increases in testosterone and strength compared to the placebo group. These findings were of course used in the marketing and made the product very popular. Now, more recent research has questioned these early claims because larger studies have found that ZMA doesn't always boost testosterone or strength. So the evidence on ZMA's effectiveness is somewhat mixed. There are also studies that tested ZMA's effect on sleep quality, with some results suggesting that it could help due to the magnesium in B6. Again, magnesium helps you relax, and B6 is a necessary cofactor for melatonin production, which is made from serotonin. So as you can see, the data is somewhat conflicting. Now, what do we make of this? Is ZMA a good supplement or not? The data can partly be explained by the complex interactions between the three nutrients. Each of them affect the body in different ways. So trying to link a multi-nutrient supplement to one outcome can be difficult. Also, the benefits of ZMA are highly dependent on your own nutrient levels and potential deficiencies. Many people nowadays are magnesium deficient and have a borderline zinc deficiency. But these deficiencies don't always show up in the blood because nutrient deficiencies happen in the tissue. So a person might feel better after taking ZMA, but a study measuring just blood levels won't notice a difference. Also keep in mind that fixing mineral deficiencies takes longer than most people think. It can take several months and severe cases even longer than that. And most studies just aren't that long. This also applies to ZMA's effect on your testosterone. In people who are zinc deficient, taking a zinc supplement definitely increases testosterone. But in someone with healthy zinc levels, the relationship is more complex. So what's my recommendation? It's usually best not to rely on multinutrient supplements like ZMA, because if you notice a positive effect, you don't know which nutrient causes it. A better approach would be to test your nutrient levels and then optimize with targeted supplements. That said, of the many multinutrient supplements out there, ZMA is a pretty good one because it has some key players that many people are deficient in. So if you don't want to go down the road of testing and customization and just want to try out a supplement, then definitely go for it. It's better than the current research lets you believe and ZMA is fairly cheap, so it's definitely worth a try. Before I wrap up this video, let's also talk about potential side effects. One of the most common side effects of ZMA are vivid dreams, which is because of the vitamin B6. While these dreams are generally harmless, they can be intense and somewhat disturbing even. Now, reducing the dosage of ZMA or taking it earlier in the evening may help mitigate this problem, but you could also just take zinc and magnesium and leaving the vitamin B6 out. That would definitely take care of it. The methionine and zinc monomethionine would be helpful for undermethylators because it is a potent methyl donor, but it could be problematic for overmethylators since they already have too much methylation going on. So if you're into methylation and know your methylation status, keep this in mind. In terms of magnesium, magnesium aspartate is usually not as diuretic as certain other forms of magnesium, like magnesium oxide. I've already said this. But taking 450 milligrams of magnesium at once can still be too much for some people. That's why I generally advise you split up your daily magnesium intake into several doses. Lastly, both vitamin B6 and zinc are copper antagonists that will displace copper in the body. If you have healthy copper levels, the B6 and zinc dosages shouldn't be a problem. But if you have an existing copper problem, like copper overload, they can push that copper out of the tissue and lead to copper dumping. You would notice this through headaches, irritability, fatigue, and the like. So if you have these symptoms, then that's probably what's going on.